Hi, it's Phil Harvey here from Light Reading at the Big 5G event in Austin, Texas, and I'm joined by Joe Cochan, who, as I knew him, was the uh, co-founder and CEO of US Ignite right. some time ago. You've got a new job now. I do. <laughs> what, I what do, are, a new exciting challenge. That's <laughs> uh, the same kind of stuff, but with a different uh, with a different group of people, and I'm really, really excited about it. Uh -huh. uh, I'll be the, uh, the new executive director of the National Spectrum Consortium, okay. which is a 400-member uh, consortium of tech and technology companies focused on spectrum and wireless innovation and technology development uh, that is an OTA, another transactional authority, for the DOD, basically a DOD, a flexible DOD contracting vehicle to spur R&D and innovation and wireless that can be used by DOD, other federal agencies, and then hopefully at scale beyond that. Right, now going back to your US Ignite days, you, you sort of started that with the, with the realization, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but with the realization <laughs> that you know, the, the, the public and private sectors weren't syncing up yeah. in certain technology areas. Smart cities weren't going to be able to happen unless both came to the table. Yeah. Um, and, and then also uh, the academic side, the research test pads and other, uh, I guess, groups that had assets, had funding, had expertise, yeah. but it just wasn't getting out, uh, you know, into the world in ways that we could use it. Yeah. Um, what, what sort of, so what were you able to accomplish at US Ignite and, and, uh, and, and what spurred the, the change? That's great, and, and it's, that's exactly right, and I think there's a lot of analogs with this new role that I can get into as well, but in a way, I think, what communication technology, telecom, uh, is so central to people's lives, and it is so intermeshed, not only with um, the sort of day-to-day -day needs and major sectors of the economy, energy, transportation, healthcare, public safety, defense, right. um, but it can't happen without the participation of those entities as well. It, it often relies on access to real estate, access to spectrum. It relies on heavy R&D. It right. isn't something that any one company can come up with. It has long time horizons. The R&D part is interesting too because it's like over the years, you know, the the telecom industry, one of the things that's 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 happened over and over again is uh, to streamline themselves, these organizations have cut cost, and to yeah. cut cost, they've all scaled back in R&D. That's right, so and, they, and they tend to focus on near-term technology development. Yeah, the problem exactly. is that to affect the kind of change we were talking about, right, 5G, 4G, those are 10-year R&D development cycles. Right. And it requires alignment between regulators, policymakers, you know, the FCC, the Spectrum folks, and everybody on down the line. And when it comes to for instance, DOD's ability to use that new technology to accomplish its mission and also to be an anchor for the R&D that ultimately ends up bleeding outside of defense and getting into all those other sectors that I mentioned. Uh, that's where NSC has this very interesting role to play, but it requires exactly the same kind of cooperation okay. that yeah. you saw, again, within federal agencies, right. across various different aspects of the government, FCC, NTIA, DOD, et cetera, and then beyond that with industry, who ends up making the solutions that get deployed by the military and others, and then who leverage the R&D that gets done in this scenario to solve those really, really complex problems to apply more broadly to other sectors of the economy. So it's the same sort of public-private partnership that was behind the founding of US Ignite and this sort of forward-looking technology development mission that requires academic and industry participation in order to make it go. Right. The innovation doesn't come from the government. The government can define the problems, the government can set the rules, the government can fund the R&D. Ultimately, they rely on industry and academia to say, we think we have some solutions. We yeah. don't know how they apply. What do you think about this? And NSC is a perfect sort of place for that innovation cycle to happen. Okay, yeah, because it, because Spectrum is the new kind of the new real estate yeah. of where wherever we're going, technology-wise, right. it's going to involve Spectrum. The DoD obviously realizes this, yes. and and they funded um, you know contests and, and research uh, uh, initiatives in the past where they've sort of said, hey, you know we're we're going to be putting people in situations where they need ad hoc networks. They need to either be, uh, you know, free from interference or to not announce to the world that they're there. Right? You know, depending right. on depending on the, the thing. And there's so many interesting industrial applications for that exact same thing. Thinking about, I mean, you know, whatever would work for, let's say, a warfighter in DoD. I could I could Im imagine hospitals wanting that same kind of isolation, you know? Yeah, and, and to your point, Spectrum is the new real estate 
DOD and public safety applications control vast amounts of spectrum yeah. on an old regime based on isolated spectrum bands for right. isolated bespoke solutions and isolated radio networks that were classified and secret and highly, and extremely important right. and highly sensitive, we are getting more and more to the place where it is no longer it is no longer good for the country, for innovation, or for DOD to right. do it that way. And so little by little, you see spectrum bands being made available as Congress and the FCC work together to free up new spectrum bands and reallocate DOD applications or ask DOD to move. There are ways in which new technology can make it not such a heavy lift, rip and replace type of solution. There's spectrum sharing, there's network slicing, right? There's all of these new waves that come with 5G and beyond. Right. And we need to find a way in which DOD can fund the research and development that can show the way toward better spectrum sharing solutions. Okay. And in the same token, with the R&D that comes out of that process, you free up the spectrum to be used in other applications, and you free up new technology innovation to be applied across other spectrum bands. So it's like a kind of a virtuous cycle to be had here if you can make it, if you can make it spin. If you can make it spin, yeah. yeah. And, and the, the, the last thing is just to uh, double down on this idea of an OTA, just because you know, for our audience, I don't know how many people were, I had to, I had to Google it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what, what that funding arrangement is exactly and why that matters in the context of working yeah. with industry. It's, it's, the OTA is basically a flexible, lighter touch contracting vehicle for the DOD to be able to, number one, move more rapidly toward R&D and prototyping. So it's not meant for massive at scale procurement of right. giant technology systems. Okay. It's meant to say, Basically, okay, we've moved beyond a lab scale or a trial scale technology. We are not quite to the place where we could go and issue a giant competitive solicitation. We can issue a different kind of, again, competitive solicitation yeah. within the OTA where you have this membership, again, at about, at, in the case of NSC, about 400 companies. Uh, some of the, not just companies either, there are some research nonprofits and universities right. who are part of the membership who can work with DOD to define, to answer some of the questions. The DOD can come and say, we're trying to figure out how to do a prototype of this. Okay. And they can say, we have the following answers, they can have a little inter interaction, and then DOD can put within the NSC, within our consortium and our consortium management framework, an amount of money to be let for a contract that can then be bid on upon the members, who can say, now we told you the kinds of things we could work on, now we want to go after actually winning some money to accomplish that. It's quicker, it's more flexible, and it's designed to do rapid prototyping. Okay. And so if, if you want to think about it, it's like a, a layer between a traditional large-scale DOD procurement and a DARPA-style or other DOD research-style grant, which okay. can be made primarily for you know, basic research. Right. You can, this yeah. kind of lives somewhere in the middle there as a way to get from one step to the okay. other. Okay. Yeah, that makes, uh, that makes sense. And then if, you're a, uh, if, if startups are watching this, now yeah. obviously big companies are probably, you know, AT&T and those types, have known about uh, you know the NSC for a while. They're they're members. They're yeah. involved. Yeah. You know, they've got board. But what about startups that are looking at this and going, "How do I get involved in this? I need to be at, at the table for." for I, I should know the exact number, <laughs> but I think up to a quarter of the membership is in fact small companies, startups, research nonprofits, oh, and universities. Okay. So that is in fact one of the very flexible elements of this arrangement of the NSC of the OTA, and it is something that we encourage because it does not require you to have a full-scale federal contracting procurement arm like many of the bigger companies do, okay. you can get in, you can team up with other members within the OTA, and you can jointly respond to a solicitation uh, as a startup, as a new company. And in fact, uh, the executive committee that is elected by the membership to represent sort of my, my board in a way, the folks who, who I work with, uh, includes reserved spots for smaller startup companies to make sure that their interests are being met. Okay, so, makes sense. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm a big fan of what you did at US Ignite and what US Ignite's continuing to do. I'm looking forward to, uh, your, your job sounds positively exhausting, but I'm looking <laughs> forward to seeing your fine work at the natural, I'm national excited, I'm very, Coalition. very excited about the opportunity. All right, well, Joe Cochan, thanks so much. Take nice care. To see you.